Welcome back. It's time to test the brute force engine on the dyno in inertia mode. I have pretty high hopes for this. There's not much involved here. I think we should get some okay readings as a baseline. If things look weird, it's because I've switched out the camera. I needed two cameras because I'm uh, filming the gauges. You couldn't see them in the previous video. So now I'm using my previous camera there and a new camera. And me being me and on a quest for more dynamic range, I've gone and made it really hard for myself by shooting in 10 bit 422 400 megabits vlog. I'm not even sure if I can edit it. Let's hope we can. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not tuned yet at all, but that seems a little low, doesn't it? I think there's something wrong with the... Must be something wrong. <laughs> must, must be something wrong, as always. Let's go back and play a little bit more with brake mode, see if we can get it to work. I ran it out of fuel. That was stupid. We've had some runs now that make more sense and I'm fairly confident we're running out of fuel. Even when I remember to fill up the tank. Could be a post line problem. It's connected to the plenum just after the blower. Not enough pressure fluctuations to make it work. So that could be a problem. Maybe we should try piping that post line into the exhaust. I'm a little bit worried about hot exhaust gas reaching the car. They kind of do it that way in the small RC engines though. They pipe it into the tank. We could also add an external pump, something that gives them like 3, 4, 5 psi. I think these carbs work with that, that kind of setup. Or we could switch this out with a normal float carb. I've filled up the tank and I'm gonna play some with the needles here. Use the brake and see, see if we can figure this out, see what's happening. I think it's running out of fuel, but uh, who knows? It might be running too much fuel. I want to thank the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. I've been using this for a while now and I really love it. Perfect size, no larger than it needs to be. It protects your cards really well, as opposed to my older wallet, which destroyed them. Even the destroyed cards have healed now. They were bent after a few days in this wallet, they're actually straightened up. So now they work again. Awesome. <laughs> really nice design, comes in a bunch of different colors, holds up to 12 cards plus cash, lifetime warranty. Head to ridge.com slash two-stroke stuffing and use my code two-stroke stuffing to get 10% off. Link in the description. Thank you, the Ridge. The same thing is consistently happening over and over again. The brake starts applying force, a couple of seconds and it bogs down. I tried giving it more and more fuel on the low and high needle, but it didn't make much of a difference at all. I just checked and I'm at almost four turns on the high needle, almost three on the low. That is, that's not right. Makes me think maybe lower pop-off pressure is needed. It's in the evening, turns out 10 bit 422 400 megabits 
Vlog is a bitch to work with, both for my editing software or my computer, and for me as a colorist, as I'm not a colorist. I'm back to 8-bit 420 in a more contrasty setting. We'll see how that works compared to 10-bit, if 10-bit is worth it. But that's not what you want to hear about. I pulled off the carb. I'm gonna try using something I know very well, as opposed to this pumper carb. A PWK, 32 millimeter. It's smaller, but uh, should work. After some persuasion with a file, the bolt pattern matches the other carb. So this is bolt on. Let's assemble it and hook up everything. And tomorrow morning, we'll try with uh, this carb. See how it behaves. See how it behaves. Same old story. Gonna whip up a gasket. Whip up, whip up, whip up a gasket. I'm out of hose clamps of the correct size, so a zip tie will have to do for now. Will it leak? Nope. I had a friend come visit in the garage and I'm not the most comfortable with filming around other people so uh, I was running fairly good with the PWK carb, it acted like it was running the float pole dry. I replaced the float pole with a see-through one, it looks exactly the same except it's see-through and what do you know, it doesn't run out of fuel anymore. The level is fairly low, wide open though, not much room for, uh, for more fuel there. Need to figure out some kind of a higher capacity fuel delivery float pole system. But a success! And we're seeing some okay numbers, even though the dyno is absolutely not sorted yet. I'm, I'm not sure if it's interference or uh, something with how I've mounted the load cell. Should try making a longer lever arm and mounting it for, further away from the engine. Kind of a success though, so far. And things aren't falling apart. Not so sure about this 10-bit vlog stuff though. Yes, I know the load cell isn't perfectly calibrated now. I'm just trying to make sure stuff works before we properly calibrate everything. I've read several comments about the load cell being so close might cause it to be sensitive to vibrations and stuff. And that's, I'm pretty sure that's part of our problem. The thing is, it's a 50 kilogram load cell, 500 Newton. Can't mount it very far away. If I do, it will just use the tiniest bit of range it has to offer. I'm not sure if that's uh, really a good idea. I just realized something. The current calibration, five kilos hung from here. That's 10% of the rating for this load cell. That might not be enough to calibrate it properly. The other calibration I did was half a meter from here, five kilograms. And I did some calculations and I think if I did it right, 83 kilograms here which is almost twice the rating of this load cell. The recommendation is to do the calibration with half the weight rating, 25 kilograms. 
which means 5 kilograms 15 centimeters from the center correlates pretty well with that bolt i think i'm gonna hang the five kilogram weight from that bolt and of course do the proper measurement and check the exact distance could help with the erratic behavior i might look into some mechanical dampening too something that is predictable so that it can be accounted for in the program five kilograms 14 centimeters from the center We'll do one last test now as I'm feeling the engine is starting to perform. I'm going to spend a week in contemplating if this whole load cell on the engine cradle setup is too sensitive and I should redesign and put it on the retarder like like is like is tradition. Recalibrated load cell. I've set it to stay at 9000 rpm steady state. And I've enabled raw data logging. Might give us some information about what's happening. The retarder seems to just be overpowering the engine. I've halved the voltage. Let's see if that makes a difference. Looking at the graph versus time, it doesn't seem to be that off. Needs some PID control, obviously. Still bugging. I think I know what it is. It isn't running out of fuel. I can see the bowl is, there's fuel in the bowl when it's bogging down. I think it's the spark plug not being able to fire due to the massive amount of fuel and just 15 degrees of ignition advance. I think if we start increase ignition advance, we might see a totally different beast. Maybe even some flames. I need to clean up the place here and fix some leaks and stuff before we start testing with more ignition advance. Maybe we'll get that flamethrower action after all. Thrower. Th 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 th